So we have been looking at uh, multivariable interactions and in particular we are looking at interactions between single loop PID controllers. Why single loop PID controllers? Because uh, most of the most of the systems today seem to use multiple PID controllers for controlling achieving desired control. Now, what is the problem with multiple PID controllers? I said it is like having multiple drivers in your car, multiple drivers who do not talk to each other, who do not coordinate. Uh, now, this can lead to uh, poor control because of lack of coordination between different controllers. So, what is the strategy? Well, uh, most of the large scale systems like chemical uh, refineries or uh, power plants, you know, where uh, companies have already invested into single loop PID controllers, they obviously want to continue with that. It is it's a historical baggage that we carry uh, that we also there are other issues like even though they might have bought uh, a computer control system or DCS, uh, still lack of awareness of how to implement advanced control, multivariable control would mean that they continue to use multiple PID controllers which interact and then uh, the way this problem is uh, handled in practice is to have programmable logic controllers PLCs together with PID controllers. These PLCs are something like uh, you know they act like a boss. Uh, if there is some problem, they take some ad hoc actions, which are based on experience, on some logic derived from the experience. If this variable is high and if that variable goes low, then shut down the steam or whatever. So, there will be logical, uh, you know, elaborate uh, logic statements, which will try to handle safety constraints by some kind of if then else, uh, XOR uh, or and so on, those kind of blocks and actually designing a system which is interaction between these multi loop PID controllers and this logic is a very complex business, it is not so easy and, uh, and that is because that is because the plant is multivariable everything you know many things affect many outputs, many inputs affect many outputs and the controllers are actually trying to solve this problem using simplistic multiple single loop controllers which is which is causing problem. There are two solutions to this problem, one is try to choose PID controller pairing in such a way, what is pairing we will come to that, try to choose pairing in such a way that there is minimal fight. Okay. After having done that, okay, tune PID controllers, see we know methods of tuning PID controllers for a single loop that is single input single output systems kind of you know back off from tuning which is there for single input single output design uh, a detuned controller okay i am not going to go detail into the detuning of the controller i'll just mention it and uh, the third option is of course discard them and go for advanced control go for multivariable control okay <coughs> so the this example i was discussing in my last class this is the four tank system, quadruple tank system. Um, we have actually, uh, I think, Simulink model for this was Krishna. You had shared the Simulink model for this, right? And then uh, you can actually, if you have access to uh, MATLAB, you can run the Simulink model. There are two PID controllers, or uh, uh, there is a PID controller design given in the paper which I have put on the net. Okay, in, in Moodle. Okay, just implement those two PID controllers. You will see what happens. In in uh, Simulink, it's just take a PID block, attach it to this, and see what happens when you try to control the system using two PID controllers. You can uh, actually simulate and see what happens. Now here, this is a multivariable system. Both the inputs affect both the outputs. There are two outputs: um, level in tank one and level in tank two. There are two inputs and we know that both the inputs affect both the outputs. So, how to pair if I do I measure level 1 and manipulate wall 2 or wall 1 
okay that is the question now there are two control walls u1 and u2 okay here i have shown you one possible scheme okay there is one there are two possible schemes here one possible scheme here is y1 and u1 now why why u y1 and u1 right now i am just explaining some concept so numbering is arbitrary what is y1 and what is u1 is uh, uh, so right now uh, so don't think that i have paired 1 and 1 that's what i want to convey okay so it did not be that 1 should be paired with 1 and 2 should be paired with 2 it's not like that um, so right now i am showing you one scheme other possibilities of course measure y1 and manipulate u2 and measure y2 and manipulate u1 so that is another scheme which one to choose and why okay so that is the question now as i was explaining to you in the last lecture when there is another loop okay see the difficulty with this kind of a configuration when there are two independent controllers which do not coordinate between each other okay is that they can they can end up you know working against each other they can fight uh, with each other see that is because if there is some action planned by the first controller its effect is transmitted to the second loop okay so the second loop gets disturbed as a consequence of manipulated variable action of the first loop and you know it comes back so you put up this loop you you unknowingly this P pid controller see let's assume that everything is perfect right now both the levels are at steady state somehow level 1 diverges from the set point what the the reaction of the proportional controller pid controller here proportional action will immediately get into action it will start uh, changing the manipulated variable so now <coughs> there may not be an immediate effect felt because it has to go through this dynamics so initial initial action is what this direct action is there okay but after some time the effect of this m1 which is transmitted to y2 because you change m1 level 2 gets disturbed level 2 gets disturbed controller 2 will come into action now action of controller 2 will come back through g12 to y1 and this is a loop okay so and you can imagine if you have multiple such pid controllers which are not talking to each other you know this retaliatory actions of other controllers can be quite drastic okay so we have to get some kind of an idea okay if i if i have what is the change in the behavior what is the change in the behavior of y1 when this loop is open that means that means y2 is not controlled and when y2 is controlled okay that's a logical way of going about analyzing the system okay that's what we are going to do in the interaction analysis <coughs> okay so first thing which i am going to assume that uh the system is an open loop okay system is an open loop and i am going to do this experiment i am going to give a step change in u1 okay i am going to give a step change in u1 by giving some magnitude change of delta u okay and then i'll record output delta y1 okay the second experiment right now think of this as a thought experiment we are not actually going to perform it in the plant okay uh, we will find some way of uh, doing calculations uh, using just the gain matrix i am looking at right now steady state interactions steady state effects i am kind of uh ignoring the dynamic component i am looking at large time component steady state behavior okay so if i give a step change in the input the output will go and saturate somewhere in open loop this all of you know okay uh then what i'm going to do is that uh i'm going to close the other loop see i have been looking at interaction between y1 u1 okay looking at interaction between y1 u1 what happens to y1 u1 loop when y2 u2 loop is closed okay and i want to come up with a measure of not just y2 loop u2 loop is closed 
all other loops are closed. See, suppose you have a system in which there are five PID controllers. Okay, I am going to look at Y1, U1. I am going to look at one pair. Okay, and then uh, look at the open loop gain, and then look at so-called closed loop gain. What is this closed loop gain here? Is that all the other loops closed except Y1, U1? Okay, all the other loops closed except Y1, U1. So. Uh, the effect that comes, the effect that comes, okay, when the other loops are closed, I am going to call it as a retaliatory effect of the other loops, okay, retaliatory effect of the other loops. So, what is my first thing? And then I am going to take a ratio of these two. I want to find out a ratio of open loop change. See, this is this is open loop change when all the loops were open this is change in y1 total change in y1 okay when all the loops except y1 u1 were closed okay every other loop is closed except the one the loop which is under consideration except that loop everything else is closed now i look at a ratio of these two effects okay this ratio is called as relative gain okay uh, <coughs> so, what we are going to do is we are going to find out relative gain for each input and output pairing okay, and make use of this relative gain, make use of this relative gain. See this, this is uh, delta y1 divided by delta u, I have given same change in both the cases delta u, delta y1 by delta u and this is delta y1 plus delta y1 r by delta u delta y delta y gets cancelled okay you have those pens Well, I am calling this 1 1 because we have done pairing of y 1 and u 1. If we had done pairing of y 1 u 2, I would have called this 1 2. I will come to this little more details. Now, see basically this equation you should look at as delta y 1 by delta u divided by delta y 1 or let us let us say delta u 1 and divided by oh sorry. Um, delta y1 plus delta y1 r divided by delta u1 now delta u1 delta u1 cancels okay so this and this will cancel and you will get this to be delta y1 upon delta y1 plus delta y1 r so this is retaliatory effect this is the open loop effect linear system they we can just show that the two can be just added okay uh, so <coughs> and then this index we are going to use for deciding the pairing okay so it's a measure of loop interaction and it can be very useful in pairing it is defined as lambda i j okay relative gain lambda i j is defined as if you do a pairing y i u j okay i th output j th input in general you will have a system which have multiple inputs multiple outputs okay and you want to do a pairing which is let us say you choose a pairing there are multiple possible pairings right if you have five inputs five outputs how many pairings you can think of Five to the power or five factorial, five factorial pairings. Some of them might be, uh, some of them you can eliminate just by logical thinking that from engineering viewpoint, some of them are, are meaningless. 
okay but even if you do all that phi factorial is a huge number if you want to screen phi factorial uh, even for a phi cross phi system it's not it's not an easy thing okay to screen uh, so you need some systematic way of screening these multiple options okay so that's why we are coming up with this measure uh, so what we are saying is that this is a relative gain this is between uh, output y and input uh, y i and input u j the gain in the open loop divided by the gain between these two this input output pair with all other loops closed we are not worried how those are closed what is the pairing all the other loops are closed perfectly working nicely other loops are closed and only this loop is open okay so when other loops are closed okay so uh, let's see calculation of uh, rga for a 2 cross 2 system very very easy task what is the if i give a step change here in delta u1 okay open loop system this is the steady state equation the steady state equation okay if delta u2 is zero and if delta u1 is changed what will happen see delta y1 delta y1 will change because of this equation delta y1 will be k11 okay and delta y2 will change which is not equal to zero because because uh, you know you have given change in delta u1 but delta u2 is zero okay but right now we are worried about gain between y1 and u1 okay so open loop gain delta y1 to delta u1 is k11 okay now my set second situation is this how will you do gain calculations can you do it i have given you this model i have given you this model okay now what if there is a pid controller what will happen if there is a pid controller here if i give a step change in delta u1 what will happen see controller will make sure if it is a pi controller or a pid controller there is no offset okay so the pid controller will act pid controller will act and it will make sure that delta y2 becomes zero okay can you calculate the gain for can you calculate the gain between delta y1 and delta u1 try it no you have this equation you have this equation now now because of pid controller is there delta u2 will not be zero delta u2 will be non zero in this case how will delta u2 change so as <coughs> to keep delta y2 zero so find out and then uh, then you, then you find out what should be the gain between uh, delta y1 and delta u1 under this situation so first you have to solve for delta y2 equal to 0 you have to solve for delta y2 equal to 0 delta y2 equal to 0 will give you delta u2 substitute that in the first equation and then you will get gain between y1 and u1 you will get delta u2 in terms of delta u1 substitute that in the first equation what do you get what is the answer yeah so if you do this calculations if you do this calculations of delta y2 equal to 0 and put it back okay you will get this particular equation right so you can see that the gain the steady state gain when the other loop is closed is different from the steady state gain when the loop other loop is not closed okay so this part this part is coming because of the retaliatory action other loop is reacting and that's what is 
giving you know that's what is making delta y1 different now this could be this could be in any we do not know how this is going to be okay sometimes uh, delta y1 might be smaller sometimes delta y1 might be larger it all depends upon all these terms k21 k11 k22 and so that so, so on okay so if i calculate the relative gain so what is what is delta y1 by delta u1 when the other loops is closed it just given by this this value and if you divide if you divide k11 open loop by all other loops closed then this is what is the relative gain that you get okay so for a for a 2 cross 2 system you can very easily show that uh, uh, it's enough to calculate one element all the other elements if this is lambda this will be 1 minus lambda this will be 1 minus lambda and this is lambda this can be shown very easily for a 2 cross 2 system okay so this is this is relative gain for which pairing y1 u1 this is relative gain for y1 u2 this is u2 y1 okay and this is y2 u2 okay so we have calculated relative gain for each possible pairing okay and now we are going to take a call using values of this relative gain there is one very very nice thing about relative gain see the gains themselves depend upon scaling or the units chosen to represent a variable right a gain would depend upon but relative gain doesn't depend upon its gain independent it's the it's unit independent it's scaling independent because it is ratio of two gains since it is ratio of two gains okay or ratio of gains let's say because two is uh, here uh, well in this case yeah ratio of two gains in the same units actually whether it is multi variable or uh, single variable it's ratio of two gains and it is it is scaling independent that is very very important this is a measure which is not depending on any uh, any which way you represent your variables okay so this is a scaling independent measure and that's why it's it's very popular uh, uh, well i don't know how much of it is uh, still used in the industry but it's it's a historically this is a very important development in uh, so <coughs> let's look at a simple uh, example again now this is uh, one um, one of the benchmark problems in process uh, control literature this is called as uh, this is a uh, transfer function matrix for a distillation column uh, in which uh, you know mixtures are separated into uh, uh, using uh, relative volatility you separate mixtures of uh, you know lower volatility and higher volatility mixtures are separated so well from a control engineering view point you can look at it as two input two output system the purity of the product at the top and the uh purity of the product at the bottom okay well simplest uh, distillation uh would be you know you want uh, you have a mixture of water and alcohol and you want to get uh, alcohol separated from water okay um obviously you are worried about the purity of alcohol which is product which has to be sold in the market so the top distillate composition let's say it is uh alcohol and bottom product is water uh then you have uh what ethyl alcohol, methyl alcohol of course i don't know about ethyl alcohol ethyl alcohol also is will come as a top product right ethyl alcohol will be a top product and water will be a bottom product so you are worried about the compositions because you want to sell it to the market okay there are two inputs uh to the system one is reflux that is some part of the product is put back into the distillation column to get a uh, good uh, separation good uh, purity and you provide heat you provide heat input to the system uh, there is a reboiler at the bottom where you provide heat so there are two inputs and two outputs what should be the pairing okay so if i do if i take the steady state gains and find out rga for this relative gain array it turns out to be it turns out to be 2 and minus 1 okay what is the meaning of minus 1 and what is the meaning of 
how do you interpret let us go back to this definition. Let us look at this if this ratio is negative what does it mean just try to interpret see let us take let us take you you change the input let us take the level case okay i change the wall position okay if i if i increase the flow what should happen to level it should increase okay but suppose rga for the particular pairing that we have chosen it comes out to be negative means what if i increase the level wall then the level is actually decreasing it's going in the reverse direction okay so when the other loop is present it is completely changing the behavior you know from positive gain it is going to negative gain something which is quite dangerous you don't want this kind of a pairing okay uh, what is the meaning of this going positive but higher value it means that retaliatory action is in the opposite direction but not too much opposite direction you know it is still smaller than the so so delta y1 is larger than delta y1 plus delta y1 r retaliatory action is reducing delta y1 okay is reducing delta y1 but then you know it is not so harmful as negative pairing or negative rga negative rga means it's changing the direction completely here all that we are saying is that when it is higher than 1 okay so definitely i don't want a pairing in which the gain is changing sign okay so i immediately reject this okay the only possible pairing for this is these two okay so only way i can pair this is okay i have given the pairing here yeah pairing here is the top composition is to be controlled using reflux ratio the bottom composition is to be controlled using or is is to be controlled using the the bottom flow rate as a manipulated variable okay bottom draw as a manipulated variable so this is this is this is what comes out from this analysis okay here i have given some uh, pid tuning parameters don't worry about them right now <coughs> okay this is just a demonstration of what happens if what is the effect of occurrence of the or presence of the other loop see this is this is the this is the control loop see let's look at these two control loops what are the two control loops that we have xd and r xb and r okay now now if you do an experiment if you do an experiment in which xd and r the the loop for the top composition is closed other loop is open if i give a step change in the set point okay if i give a step change in the set point what happens here okay the you know it it settles to the new set point within you know 7 minutes okay if i repeat my experiment with the other loop closed see what happens if my other loop is closed the settling goes to 35 40 minutes okay so if i do this experiment one loop you know first loop is closed the second loop is open i give a change in the first loop okay the first loop seems to behave very nicely but then this tuning is not going to work okay this tuning is not going to work it's not a good tuning why because because when the other loop is present you know the settling time of 7 minutes becomes 35 minutes five times increase not a good idea okay so so what i want to stress here is that i may have obtained this tuning just looking at one loop see what we do in your first course in control you look at tuning methods for single input single output okay we don't worry about what is there in the other loop if i just look at one one loop and tune it without worrying about the other loops okay then when all the loops start working together this will happen okay the the same thing happens about the second variable 
the second variable also very well tuned you know it's it's a very nicely tuned when it when the other loops are open okay but moment i close the second loop okay then you start getting this behavior oscillator behavior it is no longer settling in 5 minutes or 10 minutes or whatever it is okay so so two nicely tuned controllers tuned individually <coughs> when they are put together in this particular case because of heavy interactions they start fighting what tells you there is a heavy interaction this rga this value is 2 this value is minus 1 there is lot of interaction between the loops so now how do you take a call based on rga values okay so there are some rules to decide about that so just rga of 2 is causing so much of change in the behavior uh from you know individually tuned controllers to all controllers working together okay so you can imagine what will happen in a memo process well this particular part this particular slide has lot of a uh, little bit of complex looking algebra and you can go back and look at it more carefully i'm going to go over it very quickly uh, it's a simple derivation how do i cal calculate rga for a multiple input multiple output system okay uh, this derivation is for a square system okay it's for a square system there are number of inputs equal to number of outputs so 5 cross 5 6 cross 6 7 cross 7 whatever okay open loop gain of course is given by if you have a steady state gain matrix the open loop gain is given by ith element of that matrix okay now <coughs> if uh k is the gain matrix okay then k inverse is the gain inverse matrix i am going to call it as k tilde here okay instead of calling it k inverse i am going to call k tilde k tilde is k inverse okay now now we want to find out a scenario where y i u z y i u z this loop is open and all the other loops are perfectly controlled am i correct how do you find out relative gain you find out the gain between y i u z in open loop open loop gain is this okay now i want to find out gain between y i u z when y i u z loop is open all the other loops are perfectly closed so y should be zero except y y i right input no no here i have taken i j i output and j th. no 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 k i j is do y i by do u j no why is the output yeah output i so i want output i to be all but output i to be perfectly controlled so ith output will be non zero all other will be zero because we are assuming that there are pi controllers controlling all the other outputs oh this first one uh oh yeah yeah this one is yes yeah yeah this is j and i yeah this is steady state get between output input j and output i yeah okay so now i want to find out this okay now to find out this see to find out what is the effect of u when all the other loops are closed i am going to use this inverse equation i am going to use this inverse equation together with this particular this particular vector okay so the way i am going to do this 
is I am going to find out do u by do u i uh, do u j do u by do u j why do u by do u j why I want to find out this matrix vector because when other loops are closed see when other loops are closed u 1 u 2 u 3 or whatever u j plus 1 u j plus 2 u j plus 3 all of them are going to change in response to change made in u j I want to find that out ok. So, essentially I want to find out do u by do u j ok yeah at steady state I am looking at only steady state why no 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 we have P, uh, PID controllers no open loop they will be 0 not in the closed loop we are looking at looking at a situation where all the other loops are closed yeah except y i u j other loops somehow have been paired and have been closed we do not ask how they have been closed they are perfectly working all of them are P i or P i D controllers. So, no offset ok. See this is a thought experiment this is not we are never going to perform this ok. We can just we just want to find out uh, an index using gain matrix ok. <coughs> so, this is my uh, so, do you agree with this? Do you agree with this? Just look at the derivation. All that I have done is do u by do u j, I have used this equation here, ok. I have used this equation and then finally, you know, uh, you have to do a little bit of manipulation and then. Uh, you get this you get this uh, uh, column which is nothing but a col appropriate column see in this y all are 0 except y i ok. So, uh, you will get the column of this matrix corresponding to the ith output ok. You will get ith output column corresponding in, in the inverse matrix and uh, what you can show just go over this slide again you can derive it yourself it is not so difficult this one slide derivation that is all. I will give you the final formula, formula which is given on the next page ok. So, how do you find out relative gain array of a particular system if you are given a gain matrix I will tell you the algebraic formula ok. Algebraic formula is take the gain matrix ok take the gain matrix inverse transpose ok and then do what is called as Hadamard product, Hadamard product is or Schur product sorry Schur product, Schur product is you know element by element multiplication do element by element multiplication this is the algebraic formula ok. So, what I am saying here is something like this uh, see you have this gain matrix you have this gain matrix uh, you know k 1 1 k 1 2 k 2 1 k 2 2 ok. Then find out find out let us define uh, let us define k tilde is equal to k inverse see this is my this is my k and this is my k 1 1 tilde k 1 2 tilde. So, this is k tilde which is same as k inverse ok and then take element by element product which means k 1 1 k 1 1 tilde k 1 2 k 1 2 tilde oh you need to transpose this yeah, sorry you need to transpose this and then take uh, oh yeah. So, so, so we write k 1 1 k 1 2 k 2 1 k 2 2 uh, k 1 1 tilde k 1 2 tilde
and then RGA is simply K 1 1 K 1 1 this is element by element product ok very funny product we do not use this in matrix multiplications normally uh, this is element by element this is called sure product or also I think it is called Hadamard, Hadamard product or there is a subroutine in MATLAB which uh, you just give two matrices and ask, to ask it to do element by element multiplication it will just uh, do it for you. Okay. There is one very nice property of this uh, matrix is that all the all the elements sum to 1, okay. um, all the columns sum to 1. So, this is very nice property of RGA matrix and the nice thing is RGA is independent of scaling. Whichever way you are used to compute the gains it does not matter. Okay. You get a scaling independent measure of interactions. Okay. Um, I am just uh, giving you some rules of how to use this RGA to do pairing. Okay. If what if RGA is let us take a 2 cross 2 system, let us go back to 2 cross 2 system. If lambda 1 1 is 1, what does it mean? That means the other loop is not making any difference, okay. it is not interacting. Okay. So, ideal situation is lambda 1 1 is 1, other loop whether it is present or absent is making no difference. Okay, ideally it should be equal to one, but that may not happen. It should be close to one. Okay, so what we should do is we should look for that pairing, okay, in which RGA element is close to one. Because if RGA element is close to one, other loops are not bothering this loop. Okay, that's what it means. What if it is less than one, but greater than zero? If it is less than one, but greater than zero. It means that the other loop is acting in the same direction, okay. it is increasing. So, retaliatory action is suppose, suppose the you know original action if you give a change in the uh, flow rate the level increases, the retaliatory action further increases the level and that is why you know the RGA is smaller is less than 1. There is interaction, but we roughly say that interaction is strong if it is between 0 and 0 0.8. Okay between 0 0.8 and 1 we say that the interaction is low it is not it is not making too much effect on the. Uh, so, this is little bit uh, there is a heuristics coming in here if it is 0 what is the meaning of 0 interaction is very strong other loop is nullifying the effect of I do not want to choose this. Okay. If other loops are present it is almost nullifying the effect of the action of you know u 1 action is getting nullified by the presence of other loops I do not want this pairing. What if it is greater than 1? <coughs> the retaliatory action is in the opposite direction. Okay. Yeah, it is reducing the effect of open loop, okay. but still still it is not bad as having negative, okay. it is not so strong. So, uh, if it is less than 0 we do not want that pairing. Okay we just reject that particular pairing we do not want that and uh, so lambda is less than 0 we do not use this. Um, so, I am just going to show you this for a, a little more complex case this is there are uh, uh, a refinery distillation column there are four, 4 measurements top composition of the top product side there are in a in a refining system when you let us say you have a crude oil coming and you are refining uh, it into different products the top product could be you know light hydrocarbons a little below that in the in a, in a huge column little below that will be petroleum then you will get kerosene then you will get uh, aviation turbo fuel then you will get uh, heavy oils and so on from the same pro same column you draw different products of different volatility uh, so these are the draws they are called as side draw side product so there are four compositions which are important and you have four uh, manipulated variables, you have top flow rate, uh, bottom flow rate and two side flow rates. There are four flow rates which are manipulated, four compositions which are controlled. Look at this as a 
look at this as a as a control engineer it's a system with four inputs four outputs you want to put four pid controllers okay you have let's say you are given steady state gain matrix okay you are given steady state gain matrix now if i do rga calculations for this particular system it turns out to be this now can you tell me how should i choose pairing what about y1 i should choose i should choose y1 u1 okay because this is this is very very close to zero okay this is very close to zero i don't like this there will be a lot of retaliatory effects if i choose if i choose y1 u2 pairing or y1 u3 pairing okay there will be strong interactions y1 u4 of course is completely ruled out it's negative okay so i should choose y1 u1 pairing what about y2 y2 should be y2 should be u4 okay y2 should be u4 y3 we have no choice but to go for only positive pairing there is lot of interaction but we can't help it all others are not acceptable okay and uh, here this is closest to one okay now how many possible pairings you can think of for this system four factorial that is how much 24 possible pairings okay from that you have arrived at one possible pairing okay you have arrived at one possible pairing just using this simple analysis look at the power of this simple method okay it can tell you what is what is that choice of pairing which will give you minimum fighting between the loops okay this doesn't mean the fighting doesn't exist because look here this is going to cause problem for you this is going to cause problem for you nevertheless this is best possible pairing this is the least fighting uh, or the least interacting loop uh, pairing that you can think of so this this method is quite powerful very simple method based on just gains and then you can choose pairing so question is should we go for multiple multi variable controller or multi loop controller uh in 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 a, in a plant if you don't have a choice if you have to go for four pid controllers your employer says well i don't believe about model based control and observer and all that you you're talking about i want go to the market by four pid controllers and put them you know then you should choose that pairing which is which is giving you least uh, interaction uh it can be also used for screening options see suppose i have three inputs and two outputs okay i have three inputs and two outputs y1 y2 are the two outputs and u1 u2 u3 are three inputs can i use rga to screen out i can use two pid controllers okay i can use two pid controllers because pid controllers you know one input one output so which one to use so in general for a bigger plant this problem is much bigger the tennessee eastern problem which i showed you there are 12 inputs and there are 54 outputs okay which subset of which 12 among the <laughs> 54 there are see how many combinations are there and that one thing which i showed you at the tennessee eastern plant is a small section of a chemical plant there are many many such units each one will have you know many inputs many outputs and the pairing problem is a huge problem it's not a it's not a simple problem so what i'll do is i'll find out rga with respect to each possible pairing okay so i can take y1 y2 u1 u2 y1 y2 u1 u3 and y1 y2 u2 u3 okay which one is which one you will go for you will go for this pairing see because here this 0.76 is higher interaction than 0.84 okay in this case this is negative and this is too high okay so you don't accept this okay so uh so it is very very in this particular case it's easy to say that this is the best pairing okay you can notice one thing here if you add the columns they will add to one if you add the rows they will add to one okay same thing is here just check here 
you add the columns column will add to 1 if you add the rows they will add to 1 this is a nice property helps me to give a problem in the class in the exam i can give you an rga with missing elements you have to fill in just know that summation of row or summation so suppose you the but this is not just the thing of uh, giving a problem in the exam in a plant suppose you know some gains partially okay some gain elements are known partially and if you are able to compute rg elements for some of the if you have just partial rg information you can fill in the uh, matrix by using this property it's very okay now this is one major one big problem about rga is that you know you are just using steady state information you are not using dynamic information there have been attempts to extend this to dynamics in frequency domain i don't want to get into that uh, uh, right now uh, but uh, uh, it becomes very complex when you go to frequency domain analysis using rga kind of uh, framework it is not so straight forward uh, well when you actually do uh, this pairing it is not uh, when 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 you have a multi variable plant and when you are trying to put uh, multiple pid controllers uh, it's a difficult problem um, you cannot just rely on one major that is rga we use one more major which is singular value decomposition okay um, it's a powerful analytical tool it can be also used for robustness analysis i'm just giving you some idea about this uh, what is the singular value of a matrix Do you remember? A transpose A or A A transpose eigen values of A transpose A or A A transpose. These are called as. So here, what we do is we find out eigen values of eigen values of K transpose K. Okay, you take the gain matrix, and for the gain matrix, you can find out singular values. Okay, um, now singular value. singular value uh you know what is the condition number what is the condition number the ratio of the maximum magnitude singular value divided by minimum magnitude single value okay uh square root of that that is called as a condition number a system which is has high condition number from linear algebra what do you know it's difficult to it's difficult to inverse right it's difficult to solve does does uh control inverse control controller design does it involve inverse inversion somewhere let's look at steady state forget about forget about the dynamics look at the steady state okay <coughs> look at the steady state what is delta y delta y is the output and what is delta u u is the input okay when you design a controller you give a set point what do you give a set point on output you give a set point on the output and what do you want the controller to do you want the controller to find that input which will take the system to the desired output so if you forget about the dynamics look at the problem only as a steady state problem actually you want to solve this problem you want to solve this problem given delta y find delta u right very simple way of looking at the uh, you know control problem that given delta y i want to go to certain set points okay find the inputs that will take me to the set points okay which means well if k is square what does it mean k square what is the u that will take you to that delta y k inverse k inverse into delta y that is the u that will take you to that now k inverse okay very very practical application of you know condition number uh well you have seen in the numerical methods it has lot of uh you know meaning in terms of stability of numerical uh, systems here difficulty in control can be quantified using condition number okay if the gain matrix has high condition number which means you know your system is ill conditioned 
okay a system is ill conditioned difficult to control okay well there is only one trouble with this with this analysis it is uh, condition number is dependent upon the scaling of or choice of scaling that is used for gain gain calculation so this is not a gain this is not a scaling independent measure nevertheless this gives you a good idea about how good is your uh, so for example i yeah no 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 it is not uh, it is ratio of eigen values it's ratio of eigen values eigen values depend upon scaling it's ratio of the eigen values but the eigen values themselves depend upon uh the scaling see uh, you have different gain uh, elements in the matrix each yeah so each one you can have different scaling and if you change the scaling this ratio will change it is not independent that is not the case about rga see rga you are doing point to point calculations here you are not doing point uh, okay so so for example in this particular case i could have compared this just like i compare them using rga i could have compared them using condition number okay which which sub system is well conditioned in terms of inverting okay i can check that so condition number is a useful measure uh, so you can actually find out that subset of variables uh, which is well conditioned in terms of control using the condition number that is uh, a larger condition number implies you know you have trouble difficulty in the sense that uh, uh ah good determinant is all, well not determinant is singular it means that uh, inversion is difficult okay inversion is unreliable okay in computationally it means that when you try to invert the answers that you get so see it, it is to be taken little bit of uh, qualitative interpretation okay um you think of it that designing a controller is like inverting the gain matrix okay now when you try to realize gain matrix inversion numerically okay uh because of gain matrix is ill conditioned okay computation of its inverse can get into numerical trouble you can get spurious answers okay um uh, i can sh show you some uh, example uh, uh, maybe i can uh, put those notes on on the moodle where you take simple 3 cross 3 matrix or 4 cross 4 matrix 3 cross 3 matrix okay and uh, if it is ill conditioned if you find it inverse using matlab matlab will give you something with a warning saying that this inverse is not reliable if you multiply the two you will not get identity matrix you will get some arbitrary things okay so trying to invert a ill conditioned gain is inherently difficult is what one has to realize okay so one can face problem in realizing a controller that is what it indicates okay um <coughs> uh, see for example i am just giving you a simple example here this is a uh of a furnace look at it as a black box as a control engineer uh there are two inputs air flow rate and fuel flow rate okay uh and uh, uh what is important is the temperature of the hydrocarbon which is measured okay inside the temperature of the furnace uh or hydrocarbon is being heated here you know you have a furnace in which you are burning fuel and you are heating up some hydrocarbon to some temperature and you monitor the exit see you are burning fuel you monitor the exit concentration of oxygen okay in the in the flue gas you monitor the exit oxygen concentration okay so these are the two controlled outputs okay exit uh, concentration of oxygen in the flue gas and uh, you are heating some fluid some hydrocarbon in the in the furnace so the outlet output temperature of the 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 fluid the transfer function for this particular system is given by this simple uh, system there are time delays and your gains are given to you okay uh, with reference to two flows um you can appreciate here the gain values you know are quite uh, magnitudes are quite different that is because see this is temperature 
this is concentration okay these are two flow rates one is air flow rate other is liquid flow rate let's say let's say you have liquid flow rate so fuel other is liquid flow rate so the values can be completely different and the gain values will depend upon the choice of units that you choose okay so if you look at the rga here see you should not use only one measure you have to use multiple measures to do screening of variables rga shows that there is huge interaction okay these two loops interact a lot but rga of course gives you pairing what is the pairing it tells you that you should never pair uh the temperature with with air air flow rate you should pair temperature with uh you know only with the fuel flow rate that is the other pairing is not allowed okay and in this case in this case singular value analysis also indicates difficulty in control because you know you get this condition number which is very high 7000 a condition number above 100 is considered high okay 7000 is very high which means you will have difficulties in realizing the controller here yeah what can be deceptive condition number can be deceptive but you know it's like uh, uh, at least some systematic way of thinking about the problem yeah so what you try to do normally is that you try to find out each element in the gain matrix something like a dimensionless uh you know you have to do lot of uh, um what i would say pre treatment of your gain matrix before you can uh, you know so what i would do in such a case to find the gain matrix instead of using direct units i would say percentage change by percentage change okay uh so uh you know depending upon whatever is your measuring device okay let let's take its maximum and minimum and then define a percentage with respect reference to that so try to make is as unit independent as possible and then uh, you know but what you say is right it can be uh, this singular value analysis can be deceptive it depends upon the gain <coughs> so uh, another example where you have uh, six you have four outputs and six uh inputs okay and uh, in this particular case if you see uh there are different sub subsets of the different subsets of manipulated variables taken okay and then for each subset you find out the condition number outputs are same there are four outputs i have to choose four inputs which four input to choose okay see so this can be used as a pre screening in this case these two are see this one is definitely not this one definitely not not a good combination because this is 60000 this is you know 1 lakh 16000 this is 9000 so these three are ruled out okay among these three these three are competing okay now i can use rga on these three okay see i have to use it's like you know it's like some bags of uh, uh, linear algebra tools that you have and then you are trying to somehow come up with some simple measures yeah why should i so we are not going to use this only only thing no we are going to use multiple so there are for example uh, you know um uh doctor asks you to do some uh, when there is a uh, malaria or uh, this thing he asks you to do a blood test some of those blood tests are deceptive still you they are asked you to do it right because they give you some indication okay see they give you a relative measure they give you a relative measure once you have chosen set of way of turing gains they give you a relative measure so even if you even if you uh, what is important to note here is that even if you rescale your gains these these relative things are not going to change the values of singular values might change okay but the fact that this particular combination has higher singular value that will not change too much okay so so 
it's a tool which you have to use in a complex scenario with uh, no 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 larger condition numbers it will not happen that you know uh, see this condition number actually depends upon uh, some uh, orientations of the you know uh, eigen vectors of and it will not fundamentally you know it will not change so much that so as a relative measure to you know check between multiple things it is it's it's a it's a good indicator i am not saying you should rely completely on this okay so just because blood test is deceptive at times particularly when you want to check for malaria doesn't mean you do not do blood test you also do blood test you also do something else okay so not that you completely uh, rule out because it is deceptive all this it will proportionally shrink yeah it will proportionally shrink so comparative it is many times useful yes comparative it is useful okay <coughs> there are many such measures which were developed in the literature because people wanted to deal with uh, uh, you know loops which are interacting and this is one of them niederlinsky index you know you have multiple input and multiple outputs and then you want to distinguish between uh you know you want to find out whether something there is something called integral controllability of a system okay so um well these measures have survived probably because they are simple okay on some simple information just gain matrix you know you can come up with some pre screening okay you have to use this pre screening together with your intuition uh, as a or to together with your uh, understanding of the system as a engineer physics of the system this is just a tool to help you okay it's not it's not the solution okay and it's good because it's not the solution so that i keep saying in every course that if it was a those the solution matlab would solve it for you then you and me are not required right so uh good these tools are fuzzy and then you know you need somebody uh, a human being to uh, say take the final call what is the right thing to do so um now what you do in this niederlinsky index is another index that tells you whether a system is whether it is possible to control the given system using multiple controllers that have integral action okay so this is a ruling out test whether it is possible or not possible are you doing something fundamentally wrong by putting up multiple pid controllers that you can find out using this niederlinsky index okay so uh, you rearrange the matrix in such a way the uh, transfer function matrix says that your chosen pairing appears on the diagonal see you have already done pairing let's say using rga okay rga did not consider any uh, anything about stability it just told you you know pairing which way to do and it rejected pairings which can potentially lead to instability negative uh, element pairings can lead to instability so those were rejected it doesn't say anything about uh, it's whether it's possible to control okay so what you do here is uh, this is again a gain dependent index which you can find and uh, uh, you know it it shows that uh, if this particular index okay this index is uh, first thing that you have to do is to rearrange uh, the system the transfer function matrix in such a way that the pair, paired variables appear on the diagonal okay and then you compute this index okay i am giving you this without a proof uh, if this index is negative system cannot be controlled using multiple pid controllers okay that's what it tells you so it's a screening test these are all screening test and you have to use them as you know a uh, bunch of tools to analyze a multivariable system um i'll just go back to this furness example uh, in this furness example rga showed us this particular pairing okay um uh, and i am now reorganizing see what is required once you have chosen the pairing you reorganize this transfer function matrix such that the paired variables appear on the diagonal okay so i have what i have done is see here air and fuel was there i have changed the matrix to fuel and air okay 
So, the paired variables appear on the diagonal. So, T hydrocarbon and fuel, this is the 1 1 element and O 2 and uh, air, this is 2 2 element. Okay, this is the paired. So, I have reorganized this matrix and then I just applied this Niedelinsky index to this particular matrix. Niedelinsky index is positive which means it tells you that you can control this system using uh, two, two controllers that have integral action. Okay. If this index had come out to be negative, then we can. So, where do you use all these things? See, suppose you have a very complex plant and you come up with two or three possible ways of pairing. Okay. Now, how do I screen out further? I check integral controllability for each one of those possibilities then I can screen further you know. So, there are systematic ways of reducing your options okay, uh, to and come up with a. Um, <coughs> so, what you do is uh, multi loop PID controllers, uh, after selection of the pairing one can design individual PID loops okay. um, and in the presence of interactions there are different ways of dealing with the interactions. Okay. One of them is uh, uh, I do not want to get into this details, I am just uh, going to touch uh, very very briefly. Uh, there are different methods given in the literature uh, that you know you can uh, tune one loop then close that loop tune then close the other loop and tune the second loop with one loop closed then you know loop one loop two closed you tune the loop 3 and so on. So, there are different different approaches given in the literature to do this uh, tuning. Uh, uh, this details of this biggest log modulus tuning you can see in the notes. I am uh, well my, my intention uh, in this particular course is um, to go to the multi variable controllers. This is just that the uh, some exposure to the multi loop controllers that you need that is because when you go out in a in a field you will find multiple PID controllers and you have to deal with them. You should at least know something about uh, that situation. Okay. So, uh, you can have a look at the notes for this uh, uh, there is one method called biggest log modulus tuning and uh, you can have uh, the details are not important uh, and the details you can see uh, from this notes. So, I want to just skip this uh, and then uh, I have given some example where if you do this detuning procedure follow this detuning procedure uh, you can come up with uh, reduction in the interact interaction between the loops. Uh, if you want a summary of this it is it is something like this you individually design each controller okay, and then put some factors. So, that you uh, reduce the gain and increase the integral time in such a way that the loop interactions become smaller. Okay. So, this is the iterative design method which uh, uh, there are sequential tuning methods. So, you tune one loop keep the plant open tune one loop close it with one loop closed tune the second loop close the second loop okay. with one and two closed tune the third loop go on doing it sequentially and so on. Okay. Uh, what I am interested in talking about is this idea of decoupling okay. and this decoupling is finally going to lead us to multi variable controllers. So, now I am getting into the area era of multi variable controllers. So, look at this diagram here see till now we were talking about two PID controllers okay, and the process part had interactions. Okay. Now, can you have a controller which is slightly different. So, this controller this controller has one more leg here which provides some kind of compensation here. Okay. The same thing is here there is one more compensatory element. So, this controller together is not this and this it is G C 1, G C 2, T 2 1 and T 2 2 there are two more elements cross links that I am introducing now. So, this is a multi variable controller it will try to simultaneously change if if I change the set point it will change u 1 1 through this route 
but it will also try to change simultaneously u 1 2. If I give a set point change in 1 and do not change the set point 2, what should happen? The set point the level 2 should remain constant, only level 1 should change. Okay. If this has to happen, then, then there has to be simultaneously you know you have to take simultaneous action of u 1 and u 2 such that only u 1 changes uh, only y 1 changes okay, and y 2 does not change. Uh, this this to happen I need this cross links. Okay. So, these cross links are called as dynamic decouplers. Okay. These cross links are called as dynamic decouplers and this decoupling elements help you to eliminate the interactions. Okay. Now, this decoupling kind of controllers can be implemented through modern DCS or PLCs. Okay. While they can be implemented through these modern computer control systems which are commercially available, people just do not know about it. So, they still continue to use two PID controllers. Why it is possible to do this? Because now when you implement a controller, it is a piece of software. Right? Actually, when you are when you are implementing this PID controller, I will be giving you this programs. Now, I will be uh, formulating an, a problem for you to solve. In that, you will realize the PID controller or any of these controllers is just a piece of software. Okay, you are solving some difference equations online. Okay, so uh, if I am solving one difference equation, I might as well solve ten different equations. Doesn't matter. Okay. So, now implementing a multivariable controller is not a big deal, it is just solving some more equations, okay, which is very easy with given the kind of computing that power that we have today. So, developing such complex controllers, cross link controllers is not at all difficult, it is very, very easy. It is just that people do not know about it that using existing hardware and software, which is there in a DCS distributed digital control system or uh, computer control system or PLC, it is possible to do this. Okay. So, we will stop here, um, uh, I can see a lot of people getting bored beyond this point and uh, what I want to do is can I can I do this, I okay. will just, um, so this lecture next lecture I want to use to do a transition from multi loop control to multi variable control. Okay. So, I will start with uh, multi variable control. Um, but this is what I want to do. Can I introduce? Can I introduce two extra elements? Okay. Can I introduce two extra differential equations or difference equations? Computer control system will be different equations, or uh, uh, continuous time system will be differential equations, such that effectively system behaves like this, the, as if there are two decoupled loops. Okay. Is it possible to do that? This is called decoupling. Okay. Using extra blocks. I am going to separate the effects, I am going to view them as two separate things. So, how do you do this if you have a transfer function matrix, we will look at it uh, very briefly okay, and then we will move on, we will move on to state space, state feedback controllers, I will go on talking about uh, observers, Kalman filtering, uh, quadratic optimal control and so on. Okay. So, now what I want to do now which is uh, the course is going to become more intense now because now we will start uh, doing compute the computing assignment. Okay, so uh, we'll set up this examples by Friday. I want uh, to form groups, uh, roughly three students in a group. Okay, and there will be three main components of this assignment. Okay, so you can choose to solve it whichever way you want. One person takes lead in one component, other person takes lead in another component. So three component are the three components of this course. One component is uh, parameter identification, model identification, whatever we did till mid sem. So, you take this plant, simulate its dynamics, collect data okay, and use it to develop a model from system identification toolbox of MATLAB. That is part 1. Part 2 is observer design, what I am going to cover next. Part 3 is the controller design. 
So whatever we learn as a part of this course, you implement it on this particular thing, make it into a project. Okay, this is going to be a very very important component, about 25 percent of the marks. Okay, so you can choose your partners. Okay, I'm going to we are going to put five problems, and if you think you can bring a problem from your domain, like you want to do from automotive domain, fine. Okay, you can bring bring a problem from your your domain. Just uh, contact us, show show it to us, and um, and we want to monitor this in three stages. So we'll have three evaluations of this, and uh, I'll give you a demo program. Okay, there will be a basis from which you can write your own programs. Okay, so uh, and using this, you should you should modify to uh, suit your your case, and then you should write closed loop control. So a complete case study. Okay, um, of whatever we do in this course. Okay, system identification, state estimation, and control. a mock case study on a simulated system which has uh, at least uh, uh, let's see depending upon the situation it could be multiple input multiple output a single input single output so we'll try to set up uh, we'll partially give you the code beyond the point you have to write your own codes okay 